how do you create your own custom mods on F1 2020? Well, you guys have been asking for this for quite a while then, because of course I am sort of becoming known now a little bit really for my custom mods on F1 2020, uh, where I literally come up with the idea, create the mod myself from scratch, then make a video on it and then put those live, I'm sure. Pretty much all of you watching will have seen some of those videos. Um, and yeah, and, and you've asked me many times, how do I do this? How do I get your mods, etc, etc, etc? Well, this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you do, not whatever you want, but you do whatever you want within the uh, parameters that Codemasters allow you to do on F1 2020. Now, before we get into exactly how you do that, I've got a big announcement for you guys. I am releasing a brand new tier of YouTube memberships where you can download all of the mods that I use for my videos. How huge is that? I've been working on this for quite a while. It's been quite a lot of work, but I think it's gonna be worth it. There's gonna be a whole new YouTube tier. tier. In fact, let's get into it right now. Below all my videos, you'll find a join button. I think the, the YouTube membership program is available in like 95 countries. So chances are it's available in your country. If it's not, apologies, I can't do a lot about that. Um, right below the video, press the join button. You'll now find a Gillen Gang Premium tier. Um, which gives an additional perk of uh, exclusive access to download the mods that I create for my, for my videos. Must have F1 2020 on PC. Now, I should say that right away, you do need F1 2020 on PC. Mods are PC only, um, and obviously I, I only really do mod mods for F1 2020, so that is a must. But beyond that, if you sign up to that, you then join the Discord, you then get access to um, a special section of my Discord server, where I will add all of the mods that I use. Um, for my video. So anything you see on my channel, um, let's go to my channel right now. So you, you got the uh, Alonso's car there on slicks. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Inter's a band. I'll, I'll put that one up at some point. Uh, we'll swapped tires. Let's go by popularity because I'll tell you what we've already got up there. We're already going to have the one lap tire life. That is up there ready to go. Uh, we've got the uh, so the zero drag one. I haven't actually done that in 2020. So that's not up there just yet. Uh, where are we? Where's the next mod video? Zero Downforce. That one's up on uh, on the Discord channel, ready to go if you just sign up to Gillen Gang Premium. Uh, 2,000 horsepower. That's up, ready to go. Uh, V8. So I've gone to modern F1 cars with V8 engines. You can drive the 2020 cars with the V8 engines uh, from sort of 2013 and backwards. Three times power DRS. So we've got a handful of mods already on there, ready to go. I'm going to be adding more and more and more as time goes on. I will also, of course, add any new videos that come up, any new mods that I create. They'll all be added on there. So guys, press the join button. Gilling Gang Premium, £4.99 a month will give you exclusive access to all of those mods. Um, I've made it really, 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 really easy to install, which is why I'm saying it in this video, because if you find that perhaps this is a bit too complicated for you or you can't be bothered, um, join Gilling Gang Premium and the mods are literally a case of download the mod in a zip file, copy the contents of the zip file straight to your F1 game folder and it's done. That's it. The mod is ready to go. You launch the game, the mod's done. It's as simple as that. It's so easy. I've worked really hard on making it as easy as possible for you guys. So join that, get over on the Discord. There's nice and easy instructions over there. Um, and then uh, I can hopefully help you out as well if, uh, if you do get stuck. So how do you make your own custom mods then? Well, first of all, I just want to quickly run you through the file system structure for F1 2020. I've got a shortcut for it on the left here. This is the root of the F1 2020 folder. Again, you need, you need F1 2020 on Steam. And if you've got everything installed in the default location, you'll find it's in your C drive, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common F1 2020. If you've got your Steam games installed somewhere else, hopefully you'll already know where that is, um, and you'll be able to go and find the F1 2020 folder. Now, of course, this folder contains quite a lot of different stuff. I think the game's about 40 gig now or so. But we're just going to concentrate today on a vehicle performance mod. Now, that's where I spend the vast majority of my time. You know, there is lots you can do in here, but obviously I'm not going to be able to show you everything today. I'm just going to kind of show you the basics of, of how you do it. The vast majority of what I do, though, anyway, is in the 2020 Asset Groups folder. That's where that contains all the tracks and all the vehicles. It contains the tyre compounds. It contains pretty much everything you'll need, certainly to do performance mods and also visual mods within this folder. Now, again, you'll see there's a few different packages here. Again, you can figure some of this stuff out for yourself, but we're going to jump straight into the F1 2020 vehicle package. Of course, if you want to do classic car mods, you've got the, the, the folder there, the F2 cars, um, crowd packages, and animation packages. You can kind of go in these folders and figure it out for yourself. For example, if we go into the animations package there, we've got a driver's folder, front-end animations. I would guess that that would be potentially modeling the driver's faces. You, it's all kind of 
named quite easily, thankfully, from Codemasters. So you should be able to figure out for yourself. But we're going to jump straight into F1 2020 vehicle package. Uh, the AI folder, I've not figured out how to do anything in there just yet. So we're going to ignore that. Teams folder is where I spent the vast majority of my time. And tire compounds folder. Um, I'll, I'll get into how to open these ERP fo uh, files in a moment. But tire compounds, I've just started to do modifiers within there. Um, but the tire... Uh, file is quite complex so if you can do some tire mods you probably need to uh, start with some more simple mods because they are fairly complex so within the teams folder unsurprisingly you've got a folder for each team you've also got the fom car folder that's the online car of course these mods won't work online anyway uh, then you've also got four uh, folders for the my team career mode now interestingly for my team when you choose an engine manufacturer that's what decides which uh, kind of base car you use and then beyond that your upgrades will then build on top of that so all those four cars are identical except for the engine that they start with um, and then you've also got a common erp that's where you know again does what it says on the tin that's um, where a lot of the shared assets are they also the mercedes performance file is in common um, the mercedes performance file actually isn't in the mercedes uh, folder so get into it then so if you open each folder it's still quite simple with inside they've just got a wp folder an asset group and an erp erp is what contains all of the visuals for the car it also contains uh the model for the shape of the car which is quite hard to edit it also contains uh, all the performance files uh, which we're going to get into just now so in order to open the erp folder what you need to do is get yourself the Ego ERP Archiver. I'll put a link down in the description, but you should be able to find it by Googling Ego ERP Archiver. It's, uh, I think it's made by, by Ryder or Ryden or something like that. Um, and it basically just allows you to open those ERP folders and edit what is inside them. So that's what we're going to do now then. We're going to go straight in and open that Ferrari folder. So you can see we're already at the path that I just showed you there. Asset group, F1 2020. Asset groups, 2020 vehicle package, teams. We're going to go into the Ferrari team open the ERP folder and this will allow you to uh, to see what is inside of it. Now, running through the tabs, the first tab, these things aren't really editable. Um, a lot of this stuff is like the 3D um, shapes for, for the car, for the tires, all that sort of thing. Um, you can't really edit these. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into those. They're pretty tricky. The package files are basically what tells it tells the game where to find everything. Um, so within here, you've got the car model, uh, which is sort of like the basic parameters for the car so this for example file will tell you whether or not the car is allowed to use drs which is how i'm able to enable drs in uh some of the cars that aren't supposed to have it and also you see it's got the, all the engine uh i guess variables uh, with the actual base engine file uh here is it here we go the base engine file uh, sorry the base engine audio file i should say um we've got the physics here which we're going to get into in just a moment the vtf uh the model whether it casts shadow so there's a few bit here anti stall um, there's a few bits in there i don't generally touch this file the only time i really use this is for you know if i'm swapping out engines i'll need to change the audio of what the car sounds like or like i said for enabling drs that's the only times i've ever edited this file also in here you've got uh cameras i've not ever edited this file but this is obviously where all the cameras are defined so you can tweak with those if you like to uh more cameras visual effects so you've got the rear light engine fail this is the the effects of what happens when when something goes wrong or, or exhaust heat uh the mirrors all this sort of thing i've never really played with any of these to be honest so i'm not going to get into those too much Textures is where you'll find, if I can find one of the right ones, decals, here we go. So I'm sure you recognize those. Textures is literally like a big image that they'll sort of lay over the car. So if you did want to edit some textures, you can do it in here. I'm not going to get into that today because I'm not really a visual person. I'm more of a performance person. That's why I'm doing a performance mod. But you can see here, um, obviously I'll tell you exactly how to edit them when we get to the performance tab. But um, yeah, you can see here, it's quite obvious what it does. Some of them are obvious like this. That's just driver numbers there. Uh, the paint steering wheel so again you know a lot of this you'll probably recognize from the game and it's quite obvious that the, the, the things that you need to edit uh, when you're trying to edit it finally though the xml files tab now this is where all apart from the tires all of the performance is defined for each individual car this is quite a long folder uh, uh file sorry i think it's about 1300 1400 lines it's quite a long fi uh, file file but this defines everything you ever need to do. So if you wanted to increase the power, you wanted to reduce the weight, you wanted to add downforce, uh, you wanted to uh, change the anti-stall, you wanted to change uh, ERS, how much power the ERS has got. I'm getting a bit lost for, for what you can do in here, but there's lots you can do in here. Um, fuel consumption is another one you can do. Um, so there's a lot in here. I'm not able to go through all of it today just because there's so much of it. But again, just play around with it yourself. Try and figure it out. I'll go through a few basics of this and, and show you what it does. But first, we can't actually edit this directly here. 
Same with the uh, with the textures I just showed you in here. You can't edit these directly, of course. You need to export them out in order to be able to edit them first. So to do that, simply go to XML files or, you know, textures, depending on what tab you're on. We're on XML files, XML files, export. Simple as that. Uh, we're going to export this on the desktop. You see, I've already got one there. I'm going to override that. And there we go. So it's on the desktop. So now if we navigate to our desktop, I can open up a new explorer here. Uh, we've got the file. Just open that in your favorite uh, text editor. I use Notepad++. You, of course, don't have to do that. And this is the file. So this is now completely editable. It is uh, 1,457 lines. It is quite a long uh, uh, file. So I'm going to very briefly take you through generalizations of what each section is. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much just because there is just too much. And honestly, I'm still figuring it out myself. It's not like I've got this completely sussed. So the engine section is obviously your engine. That's only combustion engine. The recovery system, the ERS system is completely set from that. Gearbox, again, does what it says on the tin. You see you've got all the gearbox ratios there. Um, you've got clutch settings. You've got diff settings, I think, are in there. Um, all sorts of diff different things. What percentage through the ref range you get the beat for upshifting? There's all sorts you can edit in there. Uh, so I'm just going to close that one. Fuel tank, again, pretty obvious really the capacity of the fuel tank um, this is fuel burn these two settings here um, optimal revs optimal torque for fuel uh, the comm is normally the position within the car size don't really know what that is to be honest fuel ecu is yeah the, the i guess the computer that controls the fuel so this is really where you set all of your uh, modes you see here we got the lean standard rich and max fuel so you can see here this is what it does to the power the power on max you get 1.0 times the amount of power you get on standard uh, and on lean you get 0.96 times the amount of power you get on standard so again it's all quite obvious once you start delving into it next up you've got the brake ecu this is obviously just the brakes and how all that works i've not done many mods on those um again you can just play around with these value uh, these uh, values and see what you get. Chassis is obviously the core chassis of the car. Here is you've got the mass, which is the mod we're going to do today. I won't do it for now. Um, but that's the the weight of the car, 740 kilos for the Ferrari. Um, there is actually a mass in engine. I will say I don't think the engine mass does a lot unless it's weight distribution. Um, the actual overall mass is just that number there. Um, various other figures. I don't really know what they do. Steering, maximum steering lock, wobble. Again, I haven't really de delved into that. Core aero. I've never really used that. Looks like you can probably switch off slipstream altogether if you want to do it in there. The diff fault. I have tried changing this to all-wheel drive. Sadly, that doesn't work. It crashes the game. I have tried. Uh, I don't think even front-wheel drive worked. That would have been a great mod. I've tried it for a video before. It didn't work. Um, again, a few diff settings there. Let me play around with those. Suspension settings. This one we get a little bit complex um, because the suspension incorporates the actual suspension itself. It incorporates the brake and it incorporates the tyre. Um, the actual tyre performance is in a separate folder. Um, it's, it's in that tyres folder I mentioned previously. Um, but there is still some, so like the tyre weight here, the inertia of the tyre. So that will affect, if you put that really, really high, it'd be as, as if the tyre was really heavy. So it'd be almost impossible to lock up. It'd also be very hard to get it spinning again. Um, puncture so you need at least 75 percent wear in order to get a puncture um there's all sorts in here guys again i'm not going to go through it all there's just too much um suspension as well wheel proxies don't really know what that is to be honest convex hull i think that's the sort of shape or that's the the physical size uh not physical it's the sort of invisible size of the car so that would be change the collider of it i could be wrong on that don't quote me on that um, F1 aero this is of course the downforce of the car um so these four figures here are the front downforce these four figures here are the rear downforce. Um, it's as simple as that for the numbers. Obviously, they're quite complex. I've not worked out what this part means just yet. Um, slipstream, air density, scale lifts. That's that's how much drag you'll have. Oh, no, sorry. That's how much how drag you have. That's how much uh, dirty air loss you have. So, again, you know, there's lots in here. Uh, F1 error is going to close that. F1 assist. I've not delved into this at all, to be honest. Presumably, this just is defines the how the assists work. F1 tuning is the setup for it. Again, I've not really delved too much into that. Um, but obviously, this does define the minimum maximums for each uh, F1 tune, F1 uh, setup. I have tried tweaking these four without great success. There's probably a bit more complex than just changing these numbers. I could be wrong. The plank doesn't matter about that. Suspension damage. There you go. You can tweak how easy it is to damage suspension. Wing damage. Same thing for the wing. Um, F1 tire damage, physics mesh are both empty. They were either used previously or will be used in the future. Debug system, I've tried switching all these on, nothing happens. So clearly that's a bit more complicated than that. Turbo, interestingly, I'm not sure if this does anything. I don't know if it's just a, a audio thing. It doesn't, like if you put the boost rate much higher, it doesn't seem to do much, but I could be wrong on that. Can have a play with that. Energy recovery system, I've done quite a few mods within here. This is, of course, your ERS system. Um, you, there's your, the power for the ERS. There's the, the limit on how much you can harvest. Uh, there's the limit on how much you can deploy per lap. There's your, your battery capacity. 
Um, yeah, again, lots in here, guys. I'll let you figure that stuff out for yourself. Upgrades are, I believe they're career mode upgrades. Um, I've not delved into these too much, but if you wanted to change um, how the upgrades work in Korea, there's lots of here for you. I'm just trying to close them all so we can actually see all of them. There's so many. Come on, come on, one more. There we go. That's all your upgrades you can do in career mode. So, for example, drag upgrade here. If we were to change these numbers, you can see uh, this is actually a very good way of finding out how to do stuff. So, for example, in career mode, you probably know there's an upgrade to reduce the drag, right? So, if you weren't sure which of those 1,457 lines you need to in order to reduce the drag for your mod, go to the upgrades. Because, look, rad upgrade drag. Well, obviously, that's going to be upgrading the drag. So, what does this do? It goes into F1 aero, which is one of the sections we closed up here. Um, and it modifies M aero CD min. Uh, it times it by 0.85. So, you, you, your drag... By the time everything's upgraded, your drag is 0.885 of what it otherwise would have been. So it's 88% of what it otherwise would have been. So in using that information, you can then go into drag. Um, in fact, I'll actually do a drag up, up uh, a drag mod for this video as we're here. So here we need to go into F1 aero. Here it is. And then within here, well, there you go. That's our drag. That was the same as the blow, right? M, aero, CD min, and max. There you go. That's your minimum and maximum drag. All this does is multiplies it by 0.8. Um, we're just going to reduce the drag massively. So in the Ferrari, if we set that to, to well, just zero. Let's just literally change to zero. This should create a completely zero drag mod. Um, again, I don't know why the min and max is there. Um, it's obviously quite complex. And, and that's it. So we've just changed those values. That'll do the job. So now we need to then export this back into that ERP folder. So all we're going to do is we're going to save that file. Oh, wrong button. Don't know what to press there. We're going to save this file. Uh, I'm going to close this down now. So this folder, this file now has now been updated. Um, the Ferrari VTF XML fi uh, file. All we need to do now is go back to the uh, Ego ERP archiver. Again, click on the same Ferrari file, XML files, import this time. Choose the file that we just edited. Um, and that's it. That's just imported there. And then we just need to save this. So file, save. Um, just override the previous file, obviously. Save. Do you want to place it? Yes, of course we do. And there we go. That's it. We should now have zero drag on our Ferrari car. Let's, let's, uh, let's go now and have a look. Here we go. We are now in the game. I know we jump straight on into time trial to test it. It's just easier than trying to start a race. You can just go car, track, and you're loading. It's as easy as that to test it. Because a lot of times you will need to perhaps try something. It doesn't quite work. And then you have to go out and, ed and do all that again in order, in order to edit it. Um, of course, you won't need to export it if you're just trying to, trying to redo it. Just import the same file. And here we go. Let's see if we've got less drag. We should be able to quite easily tell. Um, because we should be very, very quick in a straight line. I don't, I don't use a pad for the test. So apologies. I'm not very good. I'm not going to open DRS. I shouldn't need to. There you go. You can look how quick we're going. We're accelerating 300 max speed, 374 is the maximum speed that this gearbox will do. And that's it. We've just created a custom mod. Of course, we've just done it for the Ferrari file. Um, I'm going to quit straight on out of that because we've just done it for the Ferrari file. Of course, if you wanted to do it for the whole field, you'd need to do that for each individual team. Now, remember that the performance file it would be different for each team. So let me just show you. Uh, if I go to open, Force India. So another point to note is that some of these team names are old. They haven't updated them for a number of years. Lotus, I think, is the oldest team name. That's, of course, the new Renault team. Um, but for example, Force India, just open the ERP. Export the oh that's just import. Export the XML again. I'll just do it to desktop. There we go. Open the XML. Here we go. What was it we edited before? I'm just going to go back to this previous tab. We're going to find that this time. There we go. Put it down to zero. Zero. Save it. Back to Ego ERP Archiver. Import that XML. Force India. Save it. Done. Now the Force India is modified. So you can see you need to really work on the first one to get into um, your mind what you actually want to do and make sure that it works for that car then you can fairly quickly do it to the other cars it is a bit of a pain doing it for all 10 cars i know um, but it is a bit but it, you know it, it doesn't take too long i mentioned previously that the mercedes is different i just want to open that just to show you see there's no performance xml in the mercedes folder that's because it's in the common folder there you go it, that's how you edit mercedes performance it's just in the common folder it's just in a different erp and that's it so there we go guys that's about it for this video i think um it's, it's really the same principle for all modifying. You need to open it with the Ego ERP Archiver, edit whatever you want, edit, export it, edit it, re-import it. Uh, again, it would be the same for the uh, for the for the liveries here. Again, I'm not a visual person. I don't do these sort of mods much. But for example, you know, I could easily export that, um, edit it, and then import import it back in, and then the decals on the fry would just be changed in game. It is as simple as that, guys. One thing I will add as well, in order to get rid of your mods, of course, if you've messed something up or if you just want to go back to the the base vanilla game, all you need to do is go to Steam, right click on F1, properties, 
go to the local files tab uh, and then verify integrity of game files. I am actually in the Steam beta. I don't know if this, this window looks like this. It will do soon if it doesn't already. Um, but just verify integrity of game files. Click that. That will just scan all your files. Uh, make sure that none are different. Any that are different to what they should be, it will just re-download them and that's it. And and for me, I'm on, a, on an SSD. That takes a couple of minutes. Um, and then it's done. I'm back to the base game. Nice and easy to reset. So you can't really go wrong. Don't be worried about trying it. Just have a go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully that all makes sense. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, next couple of days or so, I will be down in the comments uh, trying to help you guys out if you do get a bit stuck. Don't forget as well, if that all seems too complicated for you, join the Gilling Gang Premium. All of the mods for my videos will be available on Gilling Gang Premium in time. We've already got a handful of mods ready to go um, that are just copy and paste in. Don't need to do any of that ERP stuff. None of that. Just copy them in, ready to go. So do join that £4.99 a month for the join button down below. Hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.